Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Vernon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very serious things going on over in the Middle East there. Putin also in his own country seemingly trying to head off a possible coup. Uh, they're not saying that in the media as of yet, but as I bring you up to date on the things that are happening, I think it'll make more sense. Starting off with, of course, as we reported yesterday, Russia sending in more ships into the region of their already fairly well-bolstered fleet there off the coast of Syria, but now they're sending more ships there. Uh, in fact, over here on Twitter here, uh, this young man right here, the Watchman's Post there, always has some pretty good information. He clicks up there on his Twitter page, but he actually shows us a breakdown of the ships, including two subs, but we also have ships that have the capability of cruise missiles. We have jamming uh, ships as well. I believe that's one of those that does a lot of the jamming techniques there. Uh, radio communications, all types of ships, and also an amphibious, I believe that's a landing ship right there, if I'm not mistaken. Can't say I'm right on that, just kind of give you a little idea on that. But while this is all going on, NATO as well came out. Uh, RIA Novosti is pointing out that NATO urged military forces in the Mediterranean to show restraint. Interesting, isn't it? They're saying to show restraint there, NATO is, uh, as the Russian fleets move in. And of course, all the while, while this is happening here, very strange thing happening in Russia. We have the President Putin here fired 15 generals of law enforcement agencies. Not quite the same thing as what we would think in English as law enforcement, but these are men that are appointed by the Kremlin over different provinces of Russia. But 15 of them have actually been fired by President Putin himself and immediately they were replaced replaced the presidential envoys in several federal districts, all 15 replaced. Now, you know, the one thing I notice about President Putin when uh, President Yanukovych, who was the uh, former and should still be considered the president of Ukraine, when he was overthrown by the Maidan coup. If you remember, we reported on this extensively. Russia, the intercept of the uh, communications between the U.S. Embassy and also the fighting forces inside of Crimea and what their plans were, the CIA operatives that had involved the neo-Nazi uh, fascists in the country to overthrow Yanukovych, and all the information was clearly there, the U.S. involvement in this coup to destabilize this nation and to overthrow it. Well, Putin had told Yanukovych then, you should have put the coup down from the beginning. Then I wouldn't have to be rescuing you out of your own country. I kind of think that Putin's not playing around when it comes to Russia. And he's taken those steps to make sure those that he sees may be falling victim to outside influence are being removed and replaced, especially in light of the situation that is currently happening with Syria. And even Russia's own deputy foreign minister has been asked to urge Russia to influence uh, over the Damascus and Lib issue. Well, the deputy foreign minister for Russia, Raya Bokov, he fired back and said that, you know, you need to warn Washington about what they should be doing with those in Idlib. Very interesting how he fired back about that. And of course, as we know, there has been multiple reports by Russian and Syrian media that the White Helmets and the jihadists are working together. There have been witnesses say they've moved around chemical weapons, chlorine gas, uh, preparing to use that on the civilian population as a pretext to get U.S. intervention. And of course, John Bolton, when he was in Israel, said that they would would strike and very hard if Syria uses chemical weapons on its own people in Idlib. Well, the odd thing is, as Russia defines it and the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad defines that, that's a green light to the jihadists and the white helmets to be able to stage this very provocation to get the U.S. involved. And Bolton clearly identified Damascus as its target. 
When you look at Damascus, we see Isaiah 17's prophecy. We see uh, the, the ships that have been moved into the region now. Ten Russian war vessels in the Mediterranean, not to mention U.S. and NATO fleets that are in the Mediterranean. We see Jeremiah chapter 49. The seas cannot be quieted. Are we on the verge of a major biblical prophecy being fulfilled in this region? We may very well see exactly that. But you know what's very fascinating to me? As I watch this and I see the buildup and what's about to happen, I cannot help but see the whole New World Order trying to manufacture the biblical prophecies of Isaiah and other prophecies as well. As Daniel says in chapter 11, the angel Gabriel comes to him and tells him that the very violent among your people, Daniel, those violent ones, they will try to establish the vision. Bring about the reconciliation for a repentance. Bring about a millennial reign and to set up the temple in the city of Israel. And I have found a very interesting article my wife shared with me here. Very troubling article. Four Texans vowed to uphold Noahide laws on the Temple Mount. They are literally quoting from Isaiah chapter 2 when they say that they are fulfilling the biblical mandate. I nearly vomited at the reading of this article right here. To see men and women that once believed Yeshua, Jesus Christ, to be the Messiah, to outright deny Him in Israel, to uphold a Talmudic law and not the laws of God. Check out the rest of that part of the message over on patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. We're going into that right after this broadcast here comes up. You're not going to want to miss it. We're going to break it down and we're going to really examine what's in the article and exactly how it is contrary to the Word of God. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget, join us September 14th and 15th. We'll be having a Shabbat Eve message about Yom Kippur, of course, right in the heart of the holidays here. Uh, there with the, uh, our friends there at Hunter's Point Celebration Center. It's hpccenter.com. Look in the description below. You can find it or just go to israelinewslive.org. Look for the, uh, the article we have about the meeting. You can click on the link from there. You can register and be a part of it. The meeting will begin on Friday evening at 6 p. or 7 p.m. is the meeting. The doors open at 6 p.m. And then again on uh, uh, Yom Shabbat, the sat Sabbath, Saturday, the meetings will begin uh, at uh, 9 and 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. On those days there, I will go from the biblical examination and then into the time, my time, the intelligence community, just how crooked political situation is here in America 30 years ago stories that happened. You know, you hear about the Clintons and the things that they allegedly did and the cover-ups and the silencing of the people. Uh, you know, I worked right there in the intelligence community and I know of eight people that were silenced and I knew exactly what happened. Some of it I didn't put together until modern days today, but even then we were told it was all because of Russian spies infiltrating this country. Very troubling when you find out what the truth is. I've been also in contact with law enforcement officials over one particular case in, 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 in particular, which would link to other cases uh, that involves money laundering, drug smuggling, politicians, illegal campaign contributions, and a cover-up that went all the way to the White House in 1990. Very troubling indeed, what you will find out there. And then on the second half of the meeting there, of course, my wife, she'll be speaking about 5G, the technology. She'll also go into the truths about standing with Israel, why we stand the way we do, and how to really stand for the people of Israel from a biblical perspective. And then I'll close this thing out when I share with you 
the very serious side of the evangelical community, the friends that I had in the Mossad, and how that they're working for a new world order, all in support of the Pope of Rome and bringing about a new world order, and how they're dragging all the Christians under a false pretense. People that I knew that even were spokespeople for the United Nations and exactly what they've said, what they've done, and where they're leading President Trump in modern days. It is a meeting you will not want to miss, I can assure you. We'll also be trying to put together a meeting in Pensacola, Florida, possibly either the 10th or the 11th. Uh, I will be probably very close to last minute announcement on this, uh, but I will give you at least about a two days notice and as far as a venue, but we need to be sure of our timeline here uh, on holding a meeting there just before heading up to Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.